evening. Welcome to our book club, our Friends in Fiction official book club this evening. I'm Brenda Gardner in South Carolina, and I'm here with my lovely co-host, Lisa, in Atlanta. Hi. And more importantly, with our special guest, Christy Woodson Harvey, to celebrate and talk about Under the Southern Sky. Not more importantly at all. <laughs> Nothing is more important than peanut butter and jelly, which if you are new to the group and you do not know, somehow our lovely ladies have gotten the nickname PB and J. <laughs> and actually, Patty Cow. Patty, Patty? Patty Cow. <laughs> Henry. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So she gets the credit for that. <laughs> There's nothing better. Nothing better. That's than right. PB and J. So. That's right. <laughs> so tonight, PB and J are talking with, as we said, Christy Woodson Harvey. And I'd like to uh, do a quick introduction, if I could, Christy, because we are so excited to have you tonight. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. And I'm, my introduction now has to be altered because before it said USA Today bestselling author, and now it is New York Times bestselling author, Christy Woodson Harvey. <laughs> Yay! Champagne! Yes, I, yes. <laughs> so, our New York Times bestselling author and USA Today bestselling author of Now Under the Southern Sky Feels Like Falling, Southern Side of Paradise, The Secret to Southern Charm, and Slightly South of Simple. That's kind of hard to say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and Dear Carolina, all of those wonderful books. She's also the winner of the Lucy Bramlett Patterson Award for Excellence in Creative Writing and a finalist for the Southern Book Prize. Her work has been optioned for film and her books have received numerous accolades. But of course, even with all those accolades, what she is most to us is one of our Fab Five <laughs> friends in fiction, authors and podcasters. So welcome to the discussion tonight, Christy. Well, thank y'all. Thanks for having me. Isn't that funny? I mean, can you believe, I mean, this just sort of sprung up out of nothing. I know. <laughs> a year and, ago, uh, more than a year ago. I know. And y'all are getting close to a landmark um, amount of membership. You're getting close to bumping on 40,000. Yeah. yeah. I mean, y'all just hit six, right? Six. But you've like zoomed past it. I mean, you're like, I was looking today and I was like, whoa, you know, it just shot right up. I mean, I, I feel like yeah. we were like planning your 5,000 giveaway. And we, then it was like, oh, well, <laughs> that's obsolete. <laughs> it's amazing. Pretty quick. Like put something together. You know, I think about y'all, we, we talk about you guys a lot because I mean, this was probably a little more than what you bargained for. <laughs> You know, I, I talked about this the other day. It all started when I said an innocuous post on mm -hmm. the page. Wouldn't it be great to have a book club? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let that be a lesson to everyone out there. To if you suggest there. that you would like something, we will ask you to start it. <laughs> well, Brenda worked with Kristen, you know, at first know. to get it started. And then, I know. You know, it was, well. We have a lot. We'll have we have our story. We'll we'll tell our story another day. Yes. No, we, I want to hear. I, I want to hear it. I don't know this. <laughs> I really this don't. Think about it. you. This is about you. Well, I yeah. mean, it's well, not the Prince of Fiction book club. That's what it's really about. <laughs> well, I tell you what. What I would like to 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 mention is how cool it was to get to meet each other in person in Atlanta. Well, in McDonough, mm -hmm. I'll say that. <laughs> That Lisa. was that was one of my favorite book tour moments. Like, I mean, meeting you guys, but also like you two meeting each other. I actually talked about that in an event. Like, that was one of the coolest things because I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I guess you think about things in a very specific way. Like we thought, oh, we're gonna start this group and it's gonna maybe help some independent bookstores. But then it kind of just drove home like wait, there are like people who have like become friends because of this. And that's a really, really cool thing. It is. It's, it's a really special thing. And there's a whole community of people who become yeah. very close as a result. Yeah. I mean, that's I can awesome. name dozens. So it's, it's really cool. I mean, awesome. um, I don't even want to get started because I won't, 
I'll miss somebody, but it, it's just no, been a very- I know. Isn't that the way it's like, I'm getting ready to write the acknowledgements for Christmas in Peachtree Bluff. And it's like, I mean, I, I know I forget people every time. I mean, you have to. And then like, as soon as the book gets turned in, I'll be like, oh! and it's, some, it's always someone like really obvious. And I'm like, how did I forget that person? And is it, you just never can remember everyone. But anyway, it's but great. We, it's not a great problem though. <laughs> it's it a is good a problem to have. And we're so grateful to everybody and, and who has become such good friends to us. And yeah. it's just been an amazing experience. But this isn't about us. This is about Under the Southern Sky. But it's a different amazing experience. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I would like to kick off the, um, the questions, if I could, Christy, because we did just, just mention that you did happen to get one of these wonderful landmark moments of being New York Times bestseller. So we had an advanced question from Sarah Grady who said, congratulations on making the New York Times bestseller list. Thank what you. is your next decade goal? Ooh, what a good question. How about um, that for not basking in the moment? <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, and I, and that's so funny. It's because Sarah like has really just hit the nail on the head with that one because that is me in a nutshell. Like, okay great and then you wake up the next day like what now I mean, you know, like it's, I don't mean it like that but I just I'm not a I'm not good at being like I'm going to relish the moment and celebrate I, I think I've done a little bit better job on this than maybe anything else because it was something that was like a big deal to me and it was you know and I wrote that in the in the post you know in one of the posts I don't think I'd really said that but that was like a huge goal for me and I remember knowing like okay this is gonna be really hard um, but that's, what's going to make it really good. And it was, it was both of those things. <laughs> it was hard and it was good. Um, no, I mean, let's see. So, I mean, I would love, um, to actually see something, make it to screen and some, like actually get all the way there in some way, shape or form. Um, that would be great. I mean, you know, and now, now I've got to be number one, right? I mean, is that the next thing? <laughs> Yep. Christmas and Peach Tree Bluff. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I don't know. Probably like top five, maybe. But I don't. I mean, but who wants to dream small? Let's do. Let's go for number one. That's right. You you are number one. number one, baby. We're ten years totally from now. Ten years from now, number one. I'm put saying it here first. <laughs> It'll happen. Right. That's right. It. Absolutely. <laughs> I would like to ask you a question about Amelia, but before I do that, I wanted to just tell you what one of the most interesting early moments of your book was for me, if that's oh, okay. Please. I, now that I've done that, I have to find it. Oh, okay. It's right after um, Amelia uh, found out the news, after she had just published her big article on the modern marriage. And, um, and she says, people always think being loved will change them, but that's not true. It's really, truly loving with the kind of love you couldn't take away, even if you wanted to, that turns you inside out. And I just thought that was so much of, I don't know, a, um, a prelude to what Amelia was all about during this book. Mm, well, thank you for, that is actually one of my favorite quotes in this whole book I'm got someone along the way tried to cut it I'm remembering now and I was like no that's like my favorite line in the whole book we're not cutting that what are you talking about <laughs> but it does give you pause you're like wait maybe it's maybe it's not that good maybe it's not that interesting like I thought that was good but maybe it's not um oh it certainly grabbed me that's one of my little so um little sticky notes <laughs> You know, it's funny too, how things like that just kind of, I mean, cause that's the very beginning of the book. So I was really just starting to form like, what is the story about? Who are these people? What's going to happen? Um, and I totally agree with you. I think it's actually one of the quotes, gosh, I should have talked about that in my talk. This is just, just really changing everything for me. Brenda. I'm going <laughs> to talk about that quote from now on. Um, but it really does kind of sum up the entire book. It really does. I mean, because it is about, you know, how we become families and what that looks like and who we choose to love in our life and how that love, especially, you know, like in the case of Parker really ends up, you know, dictating our decisions in ways that we can't really imagine. And, um, but I, I believe that too. I really do. I mean, I think there's, you know, something about 
being loved is great, but loving people in return, I think is the thing that really changes us and makes us different. And, um, you know, whoever that is, whether it's, you know, our parents or our siblings or our children or romantic or you know whatever it may be. I think it's, you know, whoever we choose to love in our life that really kind of defines, you know, our path for us in some ways. Oh, well said. It certainly provided the framework for Amelia to go through the experiences that she went through. Yeah, absolutely. You're completely right about that. It does. And, and I think, you know, that's a really important point because even though, you know, her marriage is falling apart and it is something that she thinks is going to sort of define the next chapter of her life. And it does in a lot of ways, but I think she comes to realize that that was never, that relationship was always a cop out for her. You know, it was never, she was, she was living her life with one foot out the door the entire time she was in that Mm -hmm. relationship. And, um, that wasn't, you know, her most authentic self. So. Oh, well, thanks for that, Christy. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me of that. I'm like, oh, you know, had all these like little quote cards made. I'm like, God, that's one of my favorite quotes of the whole book. I should have put that on one of the quote cards. What oh. was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> well, tuck it away, tuck it away. Um, Lisa, did you have a question for Christy? I do. I have, I have three. Lots of questions. Ooh, okay. Um, the first one is from Patty Lynn and she wants to know, she said she's always interested in the process for the audio books, which is how she does all of her books. Awesome. But she would like to know how you pick your narrators or actors as mm-hmm. she likes to call them. Yeah. Over artists. They are really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I know somebody else who does some voiceover work. <laughs> I, I do too. On the screen. <laughs> who has I a little no bit of experience. <laughs> Who is that? Who could no that idea be? who that could be. Which is actually, you know, really, who, I'm like, I'm like, well, actually, Lisa could probably answer this question better than I could. <laughs> but I'll tell you from my end of things how it works. Um, so the, the first several audiobooks I did just kind of appeared from the ether. Like I never knew anything about them or heard anything about them or was asked anything about them. Um, but the last, let's see. So this is kind of bizarre and this is about Peachtree Bluff, but I have to tell you this story because it's like kind of related. Um, But I was listening to Slightly South of Simple on a plane and I was like going to an event. I was writing The Secret of Southern Charm. I was going to a Slightly South of Simple event. Um, It was like a book festival where I was speaking about the book. And so I was listening to it because I wanted to make sure like everything in the next book, you know, fit and all of that. And so I was at this um, writer's conference and I kept, or, a book festival in Decatur. And I, I kept hearing this voice and I was like, oh, I recognize this woman's voice. Like, and I kept looking around the green room and I was like, I don't know this. Uh, yeah, I don't know. And so finally I went up to her and I said, I am so sorry. I'm Christy Harvey. You know, you just sound really familiar to me. I feel like maybe we've met somewhere. And she was like, oh my gosh, I'm Ansley. <laughs> and she had done the voiceover for Ansley in Slightly South of Simple. Wow. Yeah. And so um, we kind of got to be friends and like, she's come to events and stuff. And it's really cool because um, my audio books, like I think the last few Simon and Schuster audio has done all of, but sometimes they'll sell to someone else outside of Simon and Schuster audio. So I think that first one was like with brilliance or somebody. And so that was one of my stipulations. Like when we moved, I was like, well, she has to be Ansley because, you know, she continues to be Ansley. But for this book, um, because there were four narrators, you know, it was definitely, like a process so they send me choices basically and they'll say this is who we're thinking for this character this character this character and they like give me samples and um and so actually for this book um I ended up choosing people that weren't in the categories (laughs) if that makes sense well actually I think Cassandra Campbell was one of my choices for Elizabeth and so I chose her for Elizabeth and then um But then the other two female voices, I think were actually both people that they had pulled for Greer, but I really liked them for Greer and Amelia. And then um, I'd never chosen a male voice before. So that was kind of interesting. Um, I will say this, the only thing that is, you know, I think Southern accents are really, really hard and um, they are, (laughs) that's tricky because it's not like they're sending me clips of someone doing their Southern accent. Like I'm just getting clips of them. You can request that. 
Well, that's good to know. I mean, and they've all done, an, I mean, they're amazing and, and I've loved all, I mean, I'm there, that's not a complaint. It's just a, you know, it's something that, you know, every now and then I will hear a book and I'll think, that is a bad Southern accent, yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, so, and that is very important, but I've been really thrilled with all of my audiobooks, and I think everyone's done a really great job and they've been really terrific. I actually have not listened to this one yet, but I've heard really good things about it. So I'm excited <laughs> to listen to it. Um, and I will do that. It's kind of a weird, I have to like, get. I, I don't know. It's like, I, I have to wait a little while before I listen to it. Cause it's weird to hear your own book. I don't know. Um, but I'm really excited to listen to it. Cause I've heard it's great. And, um, I'm, I'm sure everyone did an amazing job. I've heard little bits and pieces and snippets of it and it sounded really great to me. So, um, but it is, you know, those Southern accents can be tricky. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. It seems like that's the one accent that's always overdone. Oh my gosh. Because a lot of the people that are casting those accents aren't from the South. Right. So they only know the Hollywood bad right. stuff it's not oh, Hollywood. Hollywood. Southern. right well, you <laughs> know, a lot, and, Hollywood all, Southern yeah. accent. and a lot of times on tv shows you know <laughs> too like you'll hear you're like oh my gosh <laughs> like, yeah <laughs> people barely yeah. really talk like that not every single person would have that <laughs> accent you know <laughs> but anyway it's that's so funny it's tricky <laughs> okay <laughs> So I have another question, which I love this question from Debbie Berry. And she says, although it would end sadly, but she would think that a sequel, I mean, I'm sorry, a prequel about Greer would be an interesting read. Mm. Have you ever thought about doing a prequel or telling that story? You know, I haven't. Um... I think it would be hard. Well, let me say this. I think if I did like a prequel or a sequel, you know, there could definitely be more of Greer in it. But I think like with the pieces and parts of her story that I told in this book, um, I don't know. That's an interesting idea, but I wonder if it would be kind of anticlimactic for the reader because you already know like kind of a lot about her and How what's going on with her. And it would be sad. Uh, it would be really sad. I don't know. Um, it was sad enough already. Yeah, I mean, it was sad. And that's not, I mean, that's not to say that sad books aren't good. I just. Oh, um, right. I just. Yeah. I don't know. But I, I do love that idea. I have a lot of people have given me really great thoughts about, you know, writing a prequel or writing a sequel or that kind of thing. Um, it's so funny because I loved writing this book so much and I love these characters so much, but I don't have like a really clear path of like, oh, this is what I would write for a sequel. But I think it's just because I have so many other things going on in my head. I mean, you know, Christmas of Beach Trees coming out and the wedding veil, I'm working on edits and I have another manuscript I'm kind of like thinking about. So, um, hmm. but I think it would be, you know, so many people have said <laughs> things to me about it that I'm like, why wouldn't I? I loved this story so much. Why wouldn't I write a sequel to it? So maybe, I don't know, but I would definitely, I mean, but if I did, we would definitely have more of Greer um, for sure. So, and I think that's an interesting idea. Like just, I would just be telling different parts of her story. And I've said this some, some other places, but there were actually a lot of pieces of Greer's journal entries that I ended up cutting because um, I didn't think they really moved the story forward, but could be really interesting to bring in, you know, to a later story or a former story. Okay. Ooh. I was like, uh, did we lose Brenda? Cool. <laughs> I'm sorry, no. you did briefly. <laughs> <laughs> She's back. Sorry about that little disruption. <laughs> no, it's fine. I just want to remind everyone, if you have any questions for Christy, please put them in the chat. And I do have one here from Carolyn Tadlock. She wants to know, was the summer splash and fish event based on a real event? If so, are the stakes really that high? Yes, it was based. Okay, so that whole thing was based on something that actually happened. So there is wow. a huge fishing tournament here called the Big Rock and it is, it is high stakes. I mean, big, big money on the line. Um, People, it's a really high entrance fee to even be able to fish in it. People come in from all over the world to fish in this tournament. Um, and the prizes are huge. And um, there was a case a few, a few years ago where there was someone on the boat that was fishing. They won the tournament. And I mean, I think it, wait, I'm gonna, 
Well, how much money did they win in the Big Rock when the person didn't have the fishing license? Yeah, he said it was like a million dollars. Wow. Um, and wow. they did someone on the boat didn't have a fishing license and they ended up like losing because of it so oh i mean it, it's yes it's very high stakes and it really did happen and you know it's, it's things like that that like i mean i remember hearing that and being like oh how awful but it's not something that i like thought about or i thought i'm gonna put that in a book one day or that i was <laughs> writing and i thought what a good thing i'll put that thing about the bigger it's just that's what's so bizarre about the writing process is that like you know you're writing a story and like that just comes and you're like oh cool like glad that was stored away somewhere in there um but yeah wow. yeah that's um it was based on a real thing and i just remember thinking how horrible and like just how and you know this was a little bit different because um you know, he really doesn't know that he has to have a fishing license. So it's not really like necessarily his fault, but like, it's hard to get in the good graces of someone that you maybe want to be your father-in-law once you have lost. The f and, and, honestly, and, and, the, and, and the money is like monumental, but I'm telling you, if you had asked a lot of those people, they would have said the worst part was like, losing the title you know like of, of winning that huge tournament and um because it is you know there are a lot of people on the boat so it does it get it's still a lot of money <laughs> it's a lot wow. of money no matter what even once it's divided up like it's still a ton of money so uh but I, but i also think just there's bragging rights of like having won that tournament um so yeah it would it, it was a big deal and it, it would have been a very big deal it would have been a very big deal mm. That's mind blowing. I can't believe that. They'll never forget that ever. Like, no, that's something that they'll never, ever, ever forgive themselves for. Right. I mean, it's kind of like a life defining <laughs> moment. Like, how do you like ever sort of move forward from that? But um, I mean, you know, in the scheme of life, like whatever, like worse right. things can happen. But yeah, right. you would never forget that moment. <laughs> not, not, not ever. Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Lisa, did you have another question? I wanted to pose something at once sure. you finish. Did was that all three? I yes, but there's more if you want me oh, to. Oh, good. More. Yeah, go ahead, and okay. then I'll ask my question for our for our readers. I, I have a great question from Irene Justice. Oh, hi, Irene. Um, you write scenes that literally make me hold my breath. Do you have any tips or tricks on how you create these scenes? Oh my gosh, that's so nice. Thank you for saying that. Um, you know, I, it's another one of those things. I don't know that I like really consciously think about it, but I do think that um, I always try to like really put myself in whatever position it is. Like I would try to really think about like, what if this were me? What would I be feeling? What would I be? And I do think um, bringing in more of the senses than what you would necessarily think of. Like I do, you know, what does it smell like? What is it? tastes like what does it feel like you know because I think we tend to use our sight and our hearing a lot but sometimes adding in those like extra senses can help a little bit and especially smell just because it is so related to memory and I think that even subconsciously um, I feel like if we could use smell it, it puts people in a moment that they've experienced too sometimes which is in fact I'm actually like I was just going through this scene that I wrote about the aftermath of this hurricane and Christmas and Peachtree Bluff. And I was like, what, what would it smell like? Like people need to know what it smells like because, you know, you can see the destruction and you can, you know, you can hear like the silence or the sirens or whatever it is, but that smell is like something that, you know, you'll never forget. So um, I, I think that, but also just really just trying to like put myself in the situation and what would it be like? And um, it's kind of a weird process because it's like, I feel like I'm detached somehow, but I'm also like so in it. I don't even know how to explain it. It's very bizarre because um, I can write things that are just like in real life would just like rip me apart, but I mm. am not like upset about them. It's very, it's very weird. I don't know. Well, thank goodness that you can because it comes <laughs> across so brilliantly through oh, your thank words. You. Thank you. It's a special gift to be able to to write Thank seems you. like that. You know? That's so nice. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, I have um, a question to pose to our readers and we'll, we'll ask Christy too, but I, there were so many interesting characters in this book and their relationships to each other. I mean, 
you know, there's of course Parker and Greer and Parker and Amelia and the, the moms, Elizabeth and Olivia, um, even Parker's brother, Mason. And mm. they, everything to me just had a purpose in the storyline. So I'm curious who you identify with in the book and what relationships you would like to hear more about. Hmm. See, so. I would like to know that too. So if there is ever a sequel. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is your, your beginning and research. That was truly like Christmas and Peachtree Bluff. I was on Facebook like, so what do you guys want to make sure gets in the book? I mean, it was hilarious. <laughs> there were like a couple of things that my editor would be like, I don't know if we really need that. And I would be like, no, like people have asked me about this. We have to have it in there. <laughs> It is. I mean, I'm like, I feel like you write the first book for yourself. And then after that, it's like, it's all, I said this, like the day the book came out, it's like, once it comes out, it's all of ours. Like, it's not mine anymore. It's ours. Like, it's you all released of ours. it into the world. I released it into yes. the world. <laughs> all of ours. And, you know, here we are. So it is kind of a weird feeling. So do you want me to answer that? Or are we just going to let other people answer that? I, I mean, to I, wait. I, th I would like for you to, well. Yeah, we want to know yours. Too. Yeah, we want to know yours, but I'm seeing some interesting things coming up in the chat. Oh, good. I'm excited. I can't wait to read them. Um, well, you know, I think this is weird, but I think I relate to little bits and pieces of all of my characters in some ways. Like, um, you know, I, I do have a background in journalism, and so I really related to that part of Amelia, but um, not necessarily like her personality in all of its ways. Um, I think like tradition and family are really important to me. And I think, you know, that kind of comes through in Elizabeth in a lot of ways. Um, I think um, Parker has a lot of like sentimentality to him and I have some of that to me. So I definitely... Uh, pulled that in and and just that sort of feeling of like responsibility for things that maybe aren't necessarily my responsibility if that makes sense um but I think he kind of you know feels responsible for taking care of people in his life I mean you can see that like with his father-in-law and um you know things like that where it's maybe not necessarily his responsibility but he takes it anyway um let's see who else I mean, truly, I mean, Greer, um, I think one of the things about Greer's character that I really liked writing and that I thought was interesting about her and was a point that um, actually, you know, this was written pre Friends of Fiction, but I probably could have written about it even more post Friends of Fiction. But I think that um, we tend to feel like we really know people that we follow online that we watch that we see a lot and honestly in some ways we do like when people come up to me at an event and they're like I feel like I know you I'm like well you do <laughs> like, <that's laughs> how, you've seen it all I mean you heard my like bad singing last week I mean you know like there you do like we it's that's just, something you don't get at a book signing exactly like it's it's real. <laughs> it's, it's the real deal um, so but I do think so it's not even that tendency to feel that way but I think we really do like we really come to know people through their online lives and you see a lot of that in Greer's character and especially Amelia's relationship with Greer that even though she doesn't know her that well in real life she feels like she knows her because she follows her and she reads her columns and um you know she buys her mom the Christmas present that Greer recommended on her whatever I mean you know so I do think that those things are I think those relationships are very real and um, it was kind of interesting to be able to like explore that a little bit. Um, and then there are definitely people that I feel like, you know, when I meet them, well, I mean, you guys, I mean, I felt like it was so bizarre meeting you. Cause I was like, it was almost like, I was so excited to meet you, but it was almost like, well, yeah, there they are, you know, <laughs> like we just had been hanging out. So I, yeah. I don't know. It's just, it's a very strange, it's a very strange kind of thing, but, um, but I think it's, I think it's very real. So that was really fun to get to write about. And I've really related to that in a lot of ways. And like I said, I relate to it even more now, um, you know, a year later, two years later, however long it's been. Um, that's probably enough. I want to know what other people oh. said. Well, we are <laughs> getting a lot, a, a oh, lot of 
No, you go ahead, Lisa, but I was just going to intro and say we've gotten lots of comments about that. So okay. I'm excited to. Okay, good, good, good question. We, we have a lot of people and I can't name everyone. But a lot of Mason, people want more of Mason. Yeah. I thought that was the most interesting too. Okay, so I'm really glad yeah. to hear that because I would like to write more about him. I think he would be a really interesting character and especially like to be able to get more of his backstory from his point of view because we don't get any of that. But then also to see where he goes in his life and like how he moves forward. And um, I think he's like right on the verge of like being redeemed, you know? <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> I also want to give the spoiler warning now that it's right at a little bit after 7 30. Yeah. So if you haven't read the book, you might, we're just going to give you the warning that the questions from this point further will have spoilers. But I do have some more um, comments. Dora says she loves the dynamics of Elizabeth and Olivia's lifelong friendship. Thanks. Maria said she loves Aunt Tilly. I <laughs> love Aunt Tilly. Oh, yes. I, I really um, wanted to wear an Aunt Tilly hat tonight, but I couldn't find anything appropriate. <laughs> I should have. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Leslie wants to know more about Aunt Tilly as well. Um, I did uh, notice. Quite a few Amelia's. Yes. And I did notice Debbie mm -hmm. Stone said, and this is kind of funny, having married the son of my parents' best friends, I totally identify with Parker and Amelia. <laughs> Oh, they, I were, that. they were very scheming. I will say that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That is awesome. I love that. That's really that cool. That's so funny. Yeah. A lot of fans of Aunt Tilly and Elizabeth's relationship. Mm. Good to know. Karen wants to see if Greer and Parker live happily ever after in the sequel. More Tilly. Tilly and Mason are, are two yeah, hot front runners. Here. I love that. All right. Yeah. Give Mason a book. Oh, Tilly? Michelle Marcus says, Christy, Christmas novel with Mason. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas in Cape Carolina. <laughs> yes. That sounds like something I've d I'm doing already. Or... <laughs> no, I, that, I, I'm telling you why they're writing a Christmas book. is super fun. I could definitely do that again. <laughs> That's funny. It's in the holiday spirit. <laughs> yeah, it does. It totally does. All right, I love these. This is great. Good question. Oh, Marilyn yeah. says if Mason is going to be a high school coach, he'll have to be on the moral high road. I know, that's right. He will. He's going to have to have a real, you so know. He's going to have to walk the straight mm -hmm. and narrow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that's he could like fall fun. in love with like a kindergarten teacher. Wouldn't that be cute? Ooh. That would be cute. <laughs> I don't, you would have to spend a lifetime though writing all the books that we're asking for and wanting based on these. No, actually, so. this is, this is really great. I mean, you know, there were what, four POVs or five POVs in the next one. I mean, I can, I, I don't see any problem with this. Just keep it. We could just switch somebody out. Like maybe instead of Elizabeth, we have Tilly mm -hmm. and instead of Greer, we have Mason and then we keep Amelia Maybe we don't even have Parker. Maybe instead of Parker, we have Mason and we get to kind of see his point of view. I love this, you guys. Thanks. You really just read the book for me. This is fantastic. Well, I, I have a quick question too. I'm sure Lisa's going to pull some more chat stuff. But um, one of the questions asked in advance was from JJ Novak, who asked um, that you've mentioned that Amelia was not the original name of the character. Yes but instead was Keaton. And she yes. says, I love the nicknames that some of the characters had for Amelia. Were there nicknames for Keaton as well? Um, oh yes, but what was her nickname? When she was I love Keaton. Leah Bell, by the way. <laughs> but that was not it, yeah. Um, no, but that was for Amelia. No, I know, I know, yeah. Um, I cannot remember. Isn't that crazy? But Ooh, well, that's you know, a tune in later. <laughs> yeah, I really don't remember. Um, yeah, but I did like that. But no, I had to change. I mean, there was there was a lot that got changed. But I really, it's so funny. I, now that I've talked about the book so much, you know, Amelia does pop into my mind first. But for a long time, like it was Keaton. I mean, that was her name. So it was hard for me to like switch that one, which I change character names all the time. Like Harris's name was not Harris when I wrote this book. And um, 
And like I'm an ex, but I mean, I, I change character names all the time. So that's the only time that's really happened to me where I still like after the book came out was like, oh, I still kind of feel like her name is Keaton, but um, <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, I did like that. And uh, my, my family calls me Christabel. So that's where it came from. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Again, you heard it here. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You heard it here first. Especially my aunt Kathy. Oh, mm -hmm. he always calls me Christabel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. So we had a lot of, oh, I'm sorry, Lisa, go ahead. Did you have another question from the chat? No, you go ahead. Cause I, I think I know what question that you're going to ask and I'm dying to know the answer myself. Oh, then you better, you better ask it because I'm not sure. <laughs> sure not <it's> all that <laughs> exciting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this was a question from Karen Delari. I'm sorry if I killed your last name, but she wants to know the baby's names and why we didn't find out what their name was. Uh -huh. Thank you, Karen. And um, mm -hmm. Yep. So <laughs> uh, the baby's names were George and Greer. And the first time I got that question, I thought, I mean, that person clearly wasn't reading the end very well. And then the second time I got it, I thought, Oh my God, like, what? How are these people not getting this? And then I went to go read the end of the book and was like, it's not there. <laughs> um, but, and that was sort of what I was alluding to on one of my videos that I did. Uh, but yeah, so the baby's names are George and Greer. And what I finally figured out, because I was like, how did these get cut? Like, how are there the baby's names not in the end of the book? And what I figured out, the very last like edit that I made was I had written the modern love column that appears at the end. And I just wasn't right. And I love writing columns. So I was like, this should not be hard. Like, I don't know why I can't get this right, but I just knew it wasn't right. So I turned the whole book in and I actually like emailed my editor and said, the modern love column at the end is not right. I'm going to go work on it and I will send it to you and you can just stick it in the book. So evidently when I wrote the first mod, and, and I, I guess I just hadn't thought there was anything like to me, the column was like a recap of what we already knew, you know, where it was just sort of like the wrap up. There was, there was no real information in there. It was just, you know, something sweet to kind of tie the story together. <laughs> but evidently uh, the names of the babies were in the original column and did not make it into the other column. So now I'm going to have to write a sequel just so we know the names of the babies. <laughs> like maybe that was like the, the door I left open subconsciously so that I could write another book about that these. is it. You that's think so? it. That maybe was that's your it. subconscious talk. Yeah. Yes. But their names are Greer and George after Greer, obviously the mama and George, her dad. So it was very clear to me from the very beginning that they would be boy, girl, twins. This would be their names. G and so G. cute, but we can G just erase that part and of this chat, and I'll just say you'll have to read the sequel to find out what the <laughs> twins were and what their names were. That was part of one of the pieces of information that I always um, yes, do. Thank take you, Karen. Too. Hi, Karen. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> oh yes, much much um, popularity for a sequel about George and Greer in the chat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of people um. In the advanced questions, Christy, a lot of people were really interested in your process and your writing. Hmm. And um, Lori Alcon Brown asked, did the book go in the direction you originally intended it to? Hmm. And, um, um, you know, how did how much rewrite did you do before you sent it for its first edit? Oh, that's a good question. Um, no, it always makes me laugh, like when people say like, I loved it, but it was so predictable. And I'm like, was it? Because it went a lot of ways that I didn't think it was going to. <laughs> was it predictable for me? Was right? it predictable for me? No, I mean, and you know, I mean, you if you read, I mean, look, yeah, it's like we're I don't at know. spoiler time, so yeah, I mean, yeah. like you know what's going to happen. I mean, like you know they're going to end up together in the end. Like if they don't, can you imagine? Like what a horrible story that would be like I've, here's 400 pages and they don't end up together in the end you're welcome yeah. for that. Um, <laughs> so I mean yeah like that's the kind of book I write you know it's not like gonna, gonna be a twisty like murder at the end to like throw you off that's just not what I write and it's not what I like to read it's not what I want to write um but no I mean can we like really spoiler like big time 
Okay. Yeah, it's so, after 7.30. Yeah. This so is we're, our book If, if we're big session. time spoilering. So when I originally pitched this series, the series, oh, that was like another <laughs> See, we bring, we bring it out. Bringing over, it out. Um, when I originally pitched this standalone novel. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Not anymore. Um, yeah, no, <laughs> you're already here first. No, but when I'm, I'm drinking kombucha, I haven't even had wine and that just like piled out. Um, so no, but when I originally pitched the story, I thought, um, I don't outline or anything like that. So I just kind of like vaguely pitched it. And I was like, you know, I want her to decide to become the surrogate and then like they'll fall in love. You know, it was kind of my thought. Well, then I started writing it and I could tell right away, um, like when she's going through that first round of IVF and when they're like in that little house together. And I was like, if she gets pregnant and they fall in love, this book is going to be icky. Like it just, there was something about it, like about like her being pregnant with like his baby with his dead wife and then falling in love. I was like, this is not going to work. Like, this is just not going to work. And I actually called, um, my editor and said, Hey, I just wanted to give you a heads up. This is not going to work. And she was like, no, 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 no. It's going to be so sweet. And I was like, it's not, like, it's really not. I'm just telling you, it's really not like, I can just feel it in my bones. It's not going to be good. So, um, and I was like, it's fine. Like I figured it out, you know, this is what I'm going to do instead. And, um, and, and I actually, I think that was the way the story should have gone because I, I think, I think you got a lot more out of this story of them kind of almost, I, I think especially for Amelia, she couldn't have just fallen in love with him like that. Like that wasn't going to work. There was too much of a past. She had too many scars. There wasn't enough time for her to have overcome what she'd just been through. Um, she had to get past the idea that, you know, she was going to be living in the shadow of this perfect woman who, exactly. you know, um, there was a lot that she had to overcome and, and Parker too, because he is still carrying so many scars. But I think three years later, like, even though he didn't necessarily realize it yet, like, I think he was probably at a point where if he had let himself, like he really would have been more ready than she would have. And you see that in the story too. I mean, you see that he's at a place that she just isn't. And there are a lot of reasons for that. So, um, so yeah, so that was like the major, major thing that I was like, okay, this is not going to work like plan B. Um, but you know, process wise, I just dive in, like, I don't know it. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I knew some things, but it's so funny how things just pop up because you know, the way I pitched this story, I had no idea about dogwood. Like I didn't know that this big rambling family home was going to come into play in this house at all. And I do think it kind of becomes like a metaphor for so many things in the book. I had no idea Aunt Tilly was going to be in the story. And the minute she appeared, I was like, ooh. And there was something about like the combination of her and the house that I was like, ooh, I love this. Because it it gave it just this little, I mean, it's still like women's fiction and it's fun and all those things. But it gave it this like tiny bit of like Southern Gothicness to it that I was like, ooh, I really like that. There's like this little bit of like darkness that you, um, kind of feel, you know, oh, kind yeah. of lurking around the corners. Um, and, and I don't know, she, it's, or just, you know, there's, there's more to the story than what you're really seeing. Um, so that was like a total surprise to me. Um, Mason, I mean, had no idea about any of that. Um, I also and did not know until I was actually finished with the story. I finished the book And then I was like going back through it and I thought, I really want Greer and Amelia to have like something between them that no one knows about something that like happened to them in life. That's almost like, like the Madonna, Britney kiss, like, you know, like Greer is like, like Greer is somehow like like, it, but not like it. (laughs) (laughs) But you knew, but the minute I said that, you knew what I meant. Yeah, Yeah. totally did. It's like the passing of the torch in a way of like, that somehow the reader can leave the story knowing that Greer would have been happy with how this story turned out, even though we, she never knew about it, but it's like, she doesn't know, but she knows. But she and, knows. Yeah. And so that's totally. what, um, and I really struggled with that. Cause I thought I need a secret. And I think I've mentioned, I think I mentioned this, um, but I was actually at a, like a writer's weekend in California, or we were doing a bunch of like events, like a little mini tour book events. And um, Kristen was there and Mary Alice was there and Christina McMorris. And 
actually there were a lot of other authors there, but I think it was just the four of us that were staying together and we were talking about this book. And I said, Hey, this is the story. This is what it's about. I want these two women to have a secret. And they all came up with really, really great ideas. And um, none of them were ultimately what I ended up using, but they really got me thinking along those lines of like, what could this be? And um, you know, what could these two women have between them that in some way, shape or form would translate to, you know, Greer feeling like, you know, if she had still been alive, that this is a person that she would really trust with something that was really important to her. And so I think getting to see in her life that she trusts her with something that's really important with her made it, um, it just, it felt more complete to me after that. So I don't even think I answered the question. You did. Oh, yes, you did. And it was so interesting. And I'm so glad you mentioned that about about dogwood and about I'm kind of backtracking a little bit but about dogwood and the little gothicness because it was so interesting to me the way Amelia had that dream where mm. she became it oh, yeah. she was it was just the you know just was like whoa no, I remember that yeah. I know well and I remember writing some people dream about losing their teeth I dream about losing dogwood and I was like here's my book. <laughs> like, you, you just don't know, like you, you don't really know like what's going to happen or who these people are going to be, or if you have a story. And I remember, I specifically remember that line and being like, Hmm, there's something to that. And, and thinking aunt Tilly is going to be really important in this story. I don't know who she is, but she's going to be really important in this story. I and love she, that. Oh, I do too. She was. And I have to, I'm backtracking a little bit too, but I just wanted to give you, uh, for, for your future notes, Christy, oh, about thank the you. sequel. Thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, where's my notebook, you guys? Can we? <laughs> you, can, you can look at all these comments later. I just thought this was funny. Notes. Carrie Soderman says, Mason can coach George on the baseball team. I think Greer will be in theater. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's so good <laughs> yes but the details are in the everything in between right There's little league and like oh carrie don't be so <laughs> oh my goodness I, I i can't even believe us sometimes <laughs> Annie Jerkin says she thinks she's going to reread the book now with all the insights she's learned today. Good. Thanks, Annie. I appreciate that. I feel like I need to reread it too. So I, it's time for me to listen to it. I, think. <laughs> I know. I wonder about that, especially when you're talking about a book that you might have written like five years ago and people are saying, oh, I love the way the, you know, clock turned to the number whatever in the, on this page. And you're like, uh -huh. uh, really? There, there, th this is not a joke y'all so I the other night was one of my like I had a five a six a seven and an eight and the seven was about feels like falling and it was a book club and they just wanted me to like talk and I literally got on and I was like I mean I I, I don't think they knew it like I, I pulled it together and like was fine but I was like like, I haven't talked about this book in a year. What was this book about? Like, cause all I had done, you know, for the last how, you know, I just got off of tour. I was still in this, doing all these events every day. And I was talking about this book all the time, all the time, all the time. And it took me a minute. I was like, what are these characters' names? Like, what was this book about? You know? and like, and course, uh, I mean, I know it's great. Right, right, yeah, like, you know, I'm not, you know, I mean, I like could tell you, you know, a lot about Dear Carolina still, but it's just, but it is funny because sometimes some you'll, and I'll be talking about, like a very minor character and all of a sudden I'll be like what was their name again <laughs> it's just because you, know, you forget I mean you really do it's so funny but yeah that's a good imagine thing. you do I mean it you know and then even now when you're talking about under the southern sky you're already writing yeah you know. I mean I'm like three past it yeah so I mean it yeah it, it does start to kind of yeah Anyway, oh but yeah, I, I, I definitely need, I definitely need to go back and listen to it. But I mean, I remember, I remember this one pretty well. So. Oh yeah, I, I, I'm impressed with, with all the authors who are able to do that well. I have to ask one question because I, I confess, I don't remember that, this from the book so much. And apparently it was the thing. Um, Kate Simmons Westbury, she's already laughing. 
ask the asparagus pea part was randomly hilarious. <laughs> what on earth made you think to include it? I cannot talk about this because my mom is listening and she's so mad about this part. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. I'm just kidding. No, someone had posted about it on Facebook and she was like, it was so gross. Why would you have put that in there? And I just thought it was so funny. Okay, so we are funny. eating dinner one night. We're having asparagus. And my son says something about what happens after you eat asparagus and the smell when you use the restroom. And I said, oh, that doesn't happen to me. And my husband said, yes, it does. You just can't smell it. And I was like, what? And he was like, everyone's pee smells after they eat asparagus. It's just some people have the gene where they can smell it and some people don't. And I was like, that is not true. And he was like, why would I make that up? Like, that would be such a weird thing to make up. And so I, it's just another one of those like really random things. And I was writing the scene. Well, and I was writing this scene where, you know, she's a little intoxicated and she's in this really awkward situation. And I'm like, what's better than a drunk girl in an awkward situation, making it more awkward, you know? Um, but then I thought, what a testament of true love. Like if someone will smell your asparagus pee for you, they love you like that. They love you. That is not a question. That is true. So that I felt true. like it's that moment where she just is so horrifyingly cringeworthy because I do like that. I mean, I think, I think we've all, even if we haven't done something like that, we've been in a moment where you want to look at your friend and be like, Oh my God, please stop. Please stop. Please stop. Please stop. Please stop. Like, don't, <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. And um, so I wanted to have kind of that cringeworthy moment for her, but also in a really stupid and ridiculous and roundabout way when simultaneously when she's like, so who wants to smell my pee? And Harris is like, oh my God. And Parker's like, I'll do it. I mean, you know, like, <laughs> who loves you? It's probably Parker. I mean, um, <laughs> so I'm looking for a guy like Parker and I need to find a guy who is willing to smell my asparagus pee. Got yeah, it. So there you go. Single yeah, ladies. I take mean, note. <laughs> take note. But I do, but I also thought that was a really fascinating fact. I'm getting a text. I okay, that's going to narrow your pool. It's from my mom. It's probably from my mom. <laughs> She's like, stop talking Don't about the asparagus. Talk about this. It's so good. No, mom, she texted me, enough with the asparagus. <laughs> oh, mom. and here we Sorry, Sorry mom. Highlighted moving again. on. Sorry, Christy's moving, mom. Moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Do not discuss such things. <laughs> well, I, okay, I can't move on. I have to say one more thing because Rhonda Perrette actually says 23andMe actually gives that info on their genetic report, and I have no idea what that means. See, mom, it's a thing. 23andMe is like an ancestry type. Thing. I know, but I guess it's a genetic marker or something. Yeah, that it's, you... that's, yes, it's a okay. genetic marker. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go. Another thing. Wow. You, you Hashtag learn you... things you learn in medical school that are very useful. <laughs> That's so funny. You learn oh, something goodness. new every day. I know. I cannot believe it. And I also cannot believe that it's like our hour is almost up. Already. Oh my goodness. It is. I, I just can't believe it. But I, I like, I, I would love for Christy to, um, to make some, you know, some, final remarks about the book but I'll I'll make a few announcements first and then we'll okay. turn things over to Christy because we have so much coming up in Friends and Fiction and the book club yes. and I hope I don't leave anything out but y'all are hosting um Pam Jenoff this Wednesday author Can't of wait. The Woman with the Blue Star is that right that's amazing yeah that that is right and Pam is amazing is what I was trying to say Pam is awesome amazing. that is correct yes and your indie bookstore for this week where you can get 10% off is Inkwood Books in New Jersey with the code mm -hmm. FRIENDSFIC mm -hmm. um, on Pam Jenoff Books and on other new and recent titles from the Fab Five. Mm -hmm. Our next book discussion will be The Newcomer with Mary Kay Andrews whoop whoop on June 21st. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so good. It's so good. The Summer of Lost and Found with Mary Alice Monroe on July 19th. But Christy also will be so back. Good. It's going to be a while. 
-hmm. But Christy will be back to give us the lowdown on Christmas in Peachtree Bluff for the end of the year. Hopefully we'll snag her. We'll, we'll snag her before and, then. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I think y'all are first on the list. Anytime, <laughs> any day, any whatever. <laughs> PB and J number one. Forever. <laughs> Um, but also I do have to say, um, we're doing the cover reveal for Christmas at Peachtree Bluff on Wednesday night as well. Oh, yeah. oh that's this Wednesday. Yes, that's this Yay. Wednesday. And, um, I got the most ridiculous free gift for everyone. If you order from our bookstore this week, I have to tell you, um, you know, those head scratchers, I have one and I wish that I had brought, do you know what I'm talking about? That yes, are like the I love things them. that like go over your whole head and they have yes. like all the little prongs. They feel it's so like a weird good. wiry thing. Yes, the weird wiry, wiry thing. So I will have one on Wednesday to show everyone. But um, <laughs> that is the free gift with purchase for Inkwood Books. It says friends and fiction on the handle. But I was like looking at all the like merchy stuff. And I was like, wouldn't it be so great to like be reading your book and like be doing your head scratcher? And everyone was like, <laughs> so random. I'm like, I know. But I mean, this is what we're going to do. It's going to be great. So that's going to be our free <laughs> gift with purchase. <laughs> order from our bookstore of the week um and i'm also yeah y'all come look at my website it's christywoodsonharvey.com but i'm we're gonna have a lot of fun stuff going on on thursday like to celebrate the cover reveal there's gonna be a big giveaway for like tons of copies of the other books in the series and i'm doing um these really cute i read christy woodson harvey christmas ornaments that um oh, are gonna cute. be like our little pre-order freebie for everybody this go around and um it's gonna be fun i'm excited oh. That sounds awesome. That sounds like and, you know, fun. I gotta, I gotta tell you, people love the merch. I mean, oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, there could be some merch announcements coming on, on Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. So, mm -hmm. We will. You heard it from the merch committee first. <laughs> All right, that is good to know. And um, Lisa, oh, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, um, if anybody needs a book plate for Under the Southern Sky. Let me know and I will get you one. Oh, and also for any of my books, but if anyone needs one, let me know. Okay. Oh, that was such, that's such a nice offer because oh. I know lots of people get their books and they don't have an opportunity to get a yeah. signed one. We, especially uh, now, I mean, especially yeah. little bitty baby tours we're doing. Yeah. yeah and so many people yeah. in the midsection of the country and, yeah. and out West, they don't, they're not having those same opportunities. So thank you. That is awesome. Yeah. We'll get that information out on the site too, and you'll be swamped. <laughs> yeah. Lisa, we'll did have you? everybody send you a self addressed stamped envelope with what they want. On oh, you know, they don't have to do that. You. They don't have to do that. I can, I, well, we can, we can handle it. <laughs> and the address. Right. Too. <laughs> so, Lisa, did you want to share with our readers what um, our news, our new news is? I do. We have, we're making an announcement tonight um, during our happy hour with Ron Block and Mary Kate Andrews, and we had our special guest, Rachel Griffin. We um, announced the schedule for the rest of the year. And if you notice, our December 6th episode was titled Special Holiday Episode, but now that the cat is out of the bag, we can happily announced that our December 6th episode will be with Mary Kate Andrews for the Santa suit. The Santa suit. Yay! Yay! So two wonderful Christmas books to discuss in December. I... And a happy hour with Ron Block. So December That's is so going to be holiday, happy, <laughs> holiday happiness with us. I can't tell you like how many times I accidentally said something about her book. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, we well, were been writing it forever, you know, I mean, not forever, but like, uh, you know, we've been talking about the Santa suit forever. And there were like so many times that I was yeah. always like, and then I was like, oh God, no one knows she's writing that. Don't say that. <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, we did. Um, I was at her event with um, Emily, Emily Giffen yeah. on, at her house. Yes, yes, event. yes. And during the chat, you know, we were, uh, there was a couple of us watching from the living room while they were filming. Yeah. And we were watching the chat and someone mentioned, oh yeah, she's got a Christmas book coming out. I have it on hold at the library. And we all went, oh my gosh, no, 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 no. Well, and we're like texting Meg and we're like, should she announce it? Should she announce it? We're like, they were just like, oh my gosh, behind the scenes. I was like, what are they going to do? Well, 
Yeah, because it was so up like all, all the online retailers and stuff. So, I mean, it was, <clears throat> yeah. But anyway. They so, were like, no, that person is not telling the truth. They're like, libraries don't even know this yet. I'm like, we were like, ah. Well, I'm glad the cat's out of the bag. I'm glad the cat's out of the bag. Yeah. And we didn't spill the beans. And we, yeah, uh, we said nothing. I BB just, for the record. I didn't say anything either. I didn't say anything either. I just almost did. That's different. That's yes, different. that's very different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christy, it has been such a pleasure to talk with you tonight about Under the Southern Sky. And we've gotten so many wonderful comments in the chat about the storyline and just about how much they love your characters and your writing. Oh, thank you. And we thank so you, appreciate guys. your spending the evening with us. Oh, I so appreciate it. And, um, and I will put a little post in about if you guys want book plates, how to do that. In fact, I might just make a little spreadsheet or something to like keep it simple. But um, anyway, y'all are amazing. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for having me. Thank you for putting together this amazing group of people. And I'm um, just super grateful for everything you do. And thanks for reading Under the Southern Sky. I'm glad I got yes. to talk about spoilers. That was really fun. I haven't done that yet. So yes. <laughs> Yay. Thank That's you the good thing about here. the book club sessions. Yeah. You can talk spoilers. So. That's exactly right. That's exactly well, right. thanks so much, Christy. All Hope right. you're, you continue to have a wonderful book tour. Thank you. Good night, ladies. Thank y'all. Night. Bye. 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 Oh, oh, that was so much, much fun. fun. Isn't yeah. she just so I can't believe how quickly the hour went by. There's still so many questions and we could I talk know. forever. I, feel. <laughs> I know. And I feel like there's so many things we didn't get to say in the chat too. Um, but really enjoyed the comments everybody had about the, about the characters and how they identified with them because this was such a rich book in that way. Yeah, I, I felt like because and there was so much more that you could explore. So it's just cool to be able to talk with her about those characters and and see what other readers are thinking. That's just one of the best things about this group. Yeah, for sure. And just one thing I want to know, um, who do you relate to the most, Brenda, of the characters from the book? Oh, uh, that is a tough one. I guess I'm going to say, oh, <laughs> I put I, you on the spot. Yeah, <laughs> I, you know, I'm going to say Amelia, but in truth, well, no, I, I'll just say the in truth. I think, um, I think Amelia's mom <laughs> is a really <laughs> interesting character and her friendship with Olivia is super interesting. So I'm going to pick I'm gonna pick her. So what about you? Their relationship. Um, I would say, I would say Amelia is who I relate to the most. But my favorite character was Aunt Tilly for sure. Oh, I just love yeah. her. You know, I would love more of her origin story, just you know, in a sequel, if we, you know, or a prequel. <laughs> Any quote? Yes. <laughs> yeah, someone actually well actually several someone's I think suggested that in the chat and um you know yeah I was really curious about Aunt Tilly too and then to to learn that Aunt Tilly wasn't sort of in the beginning thinking about the book she was so pivotal in several spots of the book you know so that's that's just really interesting the way authors come up with their creative process differently so yeah um, but, you know, Parker's a really interesting character, too, you know, and, and I guess he's, he's male, and I don't identify with that quite so much, but he's, he's definitely a, he has good character, let's say. Yeah. So, I, I admire Marjorie Parker. In the chat says, Marjorie in the chat says, Parker tries to please everyone like me. I can relate, Marjorie. Um. I don't try to please everyone, but I, well, I don't know. I think what it is, is saying no. I'm, it's hard for me to say no. I want to help everyone. So I guess it's kind of the same as pleasing people. I mean, I can say no, I'm not a pushover by any means, but I want to help people. 
So even if I know I might be overextending myself or overcommitting to things, I'll still say, oh, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. And it's that, you know, I think it's that saying no, trying to please people. And I could relate to that. Like Marjorie said, I can relate to that part of Marjorie too, is wanting to please people. Yeah, I, I, I think there's something in each of those characters that we can relate to. I mean, even like Mason, when you think about, about him and, and the distance he comes um, in the book. So I don't know, I could spend another hour talking about, <laughs> about Welcome just that to the part. After show. Well, not tonight. <laughs> right. Not tonight, but. <laughs> well, do but we want to share one of our other things that we were going to say about the, the next chat? We don't have a date yet, but. Okay, I'm losing the sound a little bit. For those of you that are uh, sticking on, our next informal chat that we have, that we haven't set the date for, we will actually, this, it'll be for people who've read the book and want to have a discussion with each other for Under the Southern Sky. Yes, I'm glad you thought to to mention that tonight because, you know, we, we, we can only get in so much depth on the on the with the author show so we would like um to have more time to get into depth with some of the events in the book so yeah we're cool with that and we need to set a, a date i think we'll come back to that and we'll share yes. but the next the next you know moving forward our goal is to after we do the author chat the next informal chat will be a discussion of the book so the entire chat would be Spoiler. So if you haven't read the book, you don't want to go to that informal chat. And then we'll still have some informal chats that like we've done in the past where we talk about yeah, that are open. Mm -hmm. Hanging out, you know, literary yeah, those are so like we do. <laughs> the literary what? Crushes like we oh. have. <laughs> those are so wonderful too. So we'll mix it up. Yeah. Yeah. But we wanted to share that because we know that you guys want to be able to discuss it more with each other too. Yeah, and hopefully there was some more of that in the chat too. Um, mm -hmm. Well, thanks everyone for watching tonight. Under the Southern Sky was such a fantastic book and it's it's nice to be able to share it with a whole it. community of people who've read it. So um, that being said, I hope everyone has a great mm -hmm. week and happy reading on your next novel. <laughs> The newcomer and Yay. the book club discussion. Yay. That's right. Thanks Take everyone care. for joining us. Take care, everybody. Good night. Good night.